Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well and coping with an hour less sleep. Um, for those of you uh, who are on Zoom or on YouTube later on, and for those two of us, two who are in the congregation, good, very good morning and welcome to all of you. I'm Pete Lloyd and I'm the um, minister here. And uh, just to say that if you do have to uh, leave the, the meeting and then re-enter, please uh, remember, remember to remain on, on mute through the service. Today is Palm Sunday, as I'm sure you are all aware, and I want to be thinking about who Jesus is, who we welcome when we think about Palm Sunday, who it is that we have welcomed into our hearts, into our lives. We're going to listen to a couple of songs and uh, I just want you to be praising God as you listen to the words and remembering that you have welcomed his son, Jesus Christ, into your heart. Call out 
Lord Jesus, your love is the answer. You are our rock and our trust is in you alone. Open our hearts this morning to receive your words to us. Amen. I wonder if you have ever been anywhere where suddenly, and you weren't aware it was going to happen, someone famous has turned up. Has anyone ever had that experience? Now, if you have, I would like you to wave at Adam and unmute yourself and, and tell us about what happened. I can't wave, but I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go on then, Lynn. So I was at Belfast Airport last year, or oh, the year before, and um, I stood next to James Nesbitt in the security queue. Wow. James Nesbitt, who's just been in Bloodlands on the television the last few weeks. Uh, yes, great actor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm a big fan, but he didn't look very happy, so I didn't bother him. <laughs> yes, yes, perhaps wise, perhaps wise. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Go on. Well, we met Holly Jones at the coffee shop. Of course, of course, I was there. Yeah, no. You sang with Alec Jones. <laughs> Or did you, you spoke Welsh with him, didn't you? I spoke in Welsh to him. Yes. And he's never been back since. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I, I do remember that. I, I remember being ascending uh, on uh, Escape to the Country and I'd got cappuccino all around my mouth. Yes. Well, I, I do remember one. Well, I've got the vaguest memory once of, I must have been about four going on the train to Leicester with my mum and there were crowds of people there. And then suddenly, Princess Alexandra appeared. And uh, we didn't know that she was gonna be there. I think I probably thought the crowds were there to greet me. But uh, at four, you think you're in the center of the universe, don't you? But um, yes, I, I just remember her getting off the train. Well, we, today is Palm Sunday, as you'll all, all be aware, and, um, and Jesus arrived on the donkey. If we can have that slide, please, Adam. There we go. Jesus arriving in Jerusalem on the donkey, and it was... The, um, the people would have been there to celebrate the feast of the Passover. People would have been there from all over the known world. People come to celebrate. And Jesus arrived and people recognized him. And they, um, there would have been people there who wouldn't have known who he was. But, um, and they would have suddenly seen Jesus appear and crowds cheering. Now, I'm going to talk to you very briefly about a subject which is dear to my heart which is chocolate. And I have here in my hand a Whisper Gold. Now, Whisper Gold is probably my favorite chocolate bar. You can get Whispers, which is solid chocolate, and then you get Whisper Gold. So I'm gonna to have to open this up. And you see a whisper on the outside, a whisper and a whisper gold look like any, they look like each other. You wouldn't tell the difference. I'm going to have to have a bite, which is such a shame, but someone's got to do it. Mm. That is so nice. And what you've got inside a whisper gold. I'm going to have to finish this now. Mm. 
is you've got liquid caramel. Do you know, I do hope that in heaven there are whisper golds. But on the outside, it just looks like an ordinary whisper bar, which is solid chocolate. But it's what's on the inside that makes all the difference. And Jesus, when he, he rode in on that, that Palm Sunday, would have looked, looked like any other person. We're told there was nothing special about his appearance, but what was on what was what he was like on the inside was so different. And when we let him into our lives, our lives change. When we let him into our hearts, we may still look the same on the outside, but our lives and the way we feel about things. They change. Our lives change when we let him in. And it may be that there are people today who have never let Jesus into their hearts, never welcomed him in. And maybe today is the time that you want to do that. And it's very easy because you just ask him to come in. But it could be for many of you that you want to ask him to come deeper into your life and that you want him to make more change and do whatever he wants with you today because you want to welcome him, welcome him in deeper and so I'd like you to be quiet for a moment and it may be that you just want to pray one of those prayers asking him to come in for the first time or just asking him to become more deeper into your heart. Lord Jesus, we do welcome you here today, but we welcome you. What I was about to say was, uh, we are, I'm hoping and expecting to have a Good Friday meditation service in the chapel on Good Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning with up to 30 people here. So if you would like to come, if you can let me know, please. Uh, it will also be on Zoom. So if you would prefer to stay away, that, that's fine. I would like to give priority to people who are unable to watch it on Zoom at home. Uh, but if you would like to come, then please do. And um, from what I understand, uh, we may be able to go outside and sing at some point as well during that. So that's Good Friday, 10 o'clock. And then afterwards... I think probably round about 11 on Zoom, there will be coffee and hot cross buns. So you will obviously have to supply your own coffee and your own hot cross buns. And um, it will be, the, but the service on Good Friday will be communion. So it may be that you prefer to bring your own bread and uh, wine to the service uh, but certainly if you're watching it on Zoom, you will need to have your own bread and wine with you. And then on Easter Sunday at 10 o'clock, I am again hoping that, that we can have 30 people in here for an uh, Easter Sunday service. But again, it will be on Zoom. But we're going to um, have a time of prayer now. And uh, I would like us to be praying about the way forward. We are all beginning to look forward and uh, hoping that we can see the end in sight. The question for me is, what, how does God want to bring us out of this? What does he want us to be like as we come through this? And how does he want to take us forward from this place? Uh, I was talking to somebody this week who is trying to reopen a Baptist chapel. 
uh, which has been closed down and he's desperate to reopen it. And uh, he said there are 20 people who are, who are keen to come, who, who want to form this church. And, uh, but he, he said he's having uh, challenges with uh, the Baptist Union who've got strong reservations about it. And I said, what I'm hearing from, uh, from all over the place is that the message for churches is to go out rather than to expect people to come in. Uh, and I've heard that from many church leaders and I've heard people say it here as well. In which case, what does that mean for us as Gretton Baptist Church? What does that mean for us in our communities? So I would like us to be praying and uh, praying that God will continue to lead us through this time and um, there will be a silence where there may be people who you particularly want to be praying for at this time. So let's pray. Loving Father God, we praise you because you are a great God, a mighty God. And we worship you. And we bow down before you as your child today. And we want to serve you in all that you ask of us. And we do thank you that there does seem to be a, a light at the end of this tunnel, a tunnel that for many people has seemed a long one. And we pray that you will continue to bring us through. But we do lay ourselves before you as your church family. And we ask that you will continue to mould us and to forge us and to make us so that we are the church that you want us to be. And that we will serve you in our communities as you call us to serve you. But we pray that the church throughout this whole world will become something new and, and vibrant and exciting, even more so than it already is, and, but that you will show us how to lead that wonderful, exciting news of forgiveness and eternal life, how we can share that with those people who are in our families and in our communities. We pray that you will build us to be something new. And we pray that you will take us forward from this point. We pray for our government. Lord, how we pray that you will guide members of parliament of, of all parties. And so that your will be done in this country. And Lord, how we long that this country will become a Christian nation once again. A, a Christian nation in the truest sense. Where millions of people every Sunday and in every day of the week come together to worship you and where decisions are made after prayer after listening to what you want rather than out of out of greed or self-seeking we pray you will build this nation to be a nation that serves you in every sense and that we will be playing our part in that but in these moments now of silence, we want to bring to you people who we know are in need at this time, and we want to lay them at your feet. Loving Father in heaven, we just, we know that you're a God who hears our prayers. And we lay these situations, these people, at your feet. And we put our trust in you 
and you alone. Amen. Anna is going to bring us our reading this morning. Good morning. Morning, Anna. Uh, the reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, reading from verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the, Lord's need, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless to us the reading of his word. Thank you, Anna. That's a, a very familiar passage. It's one you will have heard many, many times. And uh, it was something, what, what happened here was something which was prophesied, as, as the passage tells us in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This was something which... Uh, had been prophesied for generations and Jesus was fulfilling that prophecy you know and Jesus filled I'm sure it's something like 300 prophecies that he he fulfilled in his life I can't be sure of it I just know that it that uh, he he did fulfill all the Old Testament prophecies in his life and what I, I want to to um, look at is verse 11 where uh, we, we have in verse 10 people asking, who is this? And the crowd answered, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And they had got it wrong. They were welcoming Jesus and they were welcoming who they per perceived him to be. They said he is a prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And yet Jesus is so, so much more than a prophet. Jeremiah was a prophet. Ezekiel was a prophet. Jesus was so much more than just a, than a prophet. Jesus was the one who, as I've just said, he fulfilled the prophecies of the prophets. And they, they had got it wrong. They could not see who he really was at, the, at this time. And I think that if they had realized who he was, they would have welcomed him very differently. I want to look at how, how people welcome, just for a few minutes, people welcome Jesus and when they realized who he was and how people welcome the presence of God when they know that that's who, who it is who's there. You know, in... Uh, John chapter 20, verse 28, Thomas, doubting Thomas, 
has said that he he will uh, not believe it until he can touch the the scars in Jesus' hands and his side. And when Jesus appears to him, he said, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. He recognizes who Jesus really is. Matthew chapter 11, verse, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist, he knows who Jesus is. He's related to Jesus. And, it, and he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He knows who Jesus is, and he recognizes his place before Jesus. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10 God begins to uh, speaks to Samuel in the night and once Samuel works out who it is he says speak for your servant is listening he recognizes that this is God speaking and Sa he Samuel is just a servant And then in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, Moses is out, is out and he sees the burning bush and he starts to approach it. And he's approaching the presence of God. And God says, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And I want to remind you that you are in the presence of God, whether you're in your bedroom, in your sitting room with your cereal, whether you're here in the chapel. We're in the presence of God. And we are that Jesus Christ is here with us. And we need to recognize who he really is and what the presence of God really should mean to us. You know, uh, many years ago, just after the, um, uh, the fall of communism, 1992, I went out to Romania to teach one summer. And uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. Uh, and I was with a, a Catholic um, a charity. And I'd never really had much experience of, of Catholics, and I'd got my own very arrogant, preconceived ideas. But one thing I found was that these, these young people, uh, they're these young Roman, uh, Romanian Catholics, they had an awe of God, which I didn't have, and which thoroughly impressed me. They had an awe of God. Now, one thing I learned this week blew my mind and did put me in awe of God, whose presence we are in, whose son, Jesus Christ, we have welcomed into our lives. And, and this is what I want us to be focusing on this morning, who it is that we have welcomed in. You see, there are parts of the Old Testament where the word Lord is in block capital letters. Now I've noticed that, but never really thought about why it was. I just thought that was the way that they did it sometimes. But what I found this week was that the Hebrews had many names for God. And the translation, when we translate as Lord in block capitals, is a, comes from a Hebrew word which nobody knows how it was pronounced because nobody said it because it was a word which implied the unlimited being 
of God. It was, and so they never pronounced this word because they were in awe of God. And this was a word which did not, this was some, an attempt not to limit who God was to a word. It implied the unlimited being of God. And I'm going to read now some, uh, uh, so I'm going to tell you a few things and read you a few passages. And I'm going to pause after each one because I want you to remember who it is you have invited into your life. Who you have given your life to. And after each one, after each reading, or, or in one case, just one fact, I want, I'm going to pause and I want you to think about who it is whose presence you're in and who you have welcomed into your life. I looked up this morning to see how many stars there are in the sky. According to the European Space Agency, it's estimated that there are 10 to the power 22 stars in the universe. So 10 followed by 22 zeros. Many of them with planets and moons whizzing around them. The one who you have given your life to created all of that and knows every corner of it. In Mark chapter 4, verse 39, the disciples are in a boat and there's a storm. And we're told he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. The one with the power over the wind and waves is the one whose presence you're in now, who you have welcomed into your heart. John chapter 6, verse <clears throat> 51. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread, the bread is my flesh, which I will give for the light of the world. The living bread is the one you have welcomed into your heart.
Isaiah 61 is a prophecy of Jesus coming. Isaiah wrote, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. That's a prophecy of Jesus. Of Jesus coming. And that's who you have welcomed into your heart. In John chapter 19, verse 30, it says, When he had finished the drink, Jesus said, It's finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The one who bowed his head and gave up his spirit is the one you have given your life to. The one who made that sacrifice is the one you have welcomed into your heart. Last week, I asked if you thought you'd grown in your faith, in your relationship with Jesus over the last year. I would like to pray now that the things that we've thought on and meditated on this morning will enable us to grow in our faith today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that we learn of you through your word. We thank you that you are the light of the world. That you are the one who took our sins on the cross, that you died and that you rose again. You overcame death and sin so that we might live. Help us to see you for who you really are. What it means that you are the son of God. And I want to pray for every one of us who has shared in this time together. That we will continue to grow in our walk with you. And that as we learn more of who you are, that our love for you, our faith in you will deepen. And that we will become more like you each day. That we will learn to recognize your voice. That we will learn to trust that voice. And be willing to serve you in whatever context you call us. Help us to see you for who you truly are. Amen. I'm going to listen to a, a hymn to finish, which is a very well-known hymn and uh, one that is right for Palm Sunday.
Lord Jesus, as we go now, we ask that you will bless us, that you will fill us with your peace, with your joy, with your love, and that we may bring you glory in all that we do and say. Amen.